What's up, everybody? I'm Sal Kwani. This, this, this is Reggie Steele. And welcome to Spitballing. Spitballing, spitballing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What's up, everybody? I'm Sal Falani. This is Reggie Steele. And welcome to Spitballing. Let's get right to it. You ready for this? Bow, bow, wow, wow. Yeah, man. Ready? Yeah, here play play us a little excerpt. All right, here we go. Grants, um, here's Fox this morning. She is saying that they are giving the formula, all these pallets of formula, to the illegal babies down on the border. Meanwhile, so many American families can't find this formula on their shelves in their stores man illegal babies uh, man <laughs> good lord first off let's just go ahead and address this apparently there's a baby there's a baby formula shortage in the world right now or in the u.s and at the border there's a processing center that that has baby formula that's able to give it to you know to these immigrant families that are coming here to the, for, you know coming here from other countries or from mexico and so fox news um, they feel some type of way about feeding the babies, bro. I'm, I'm sorry, feeding the illegal babies. Whoever needs formula should get it. All right. That's it. It doesn't matter what side of the invisible line they're on. It doesn't matter the color of the skin. That shouldn't matter. It does matter, but it shouldn't matter. And that's right. what's happening. And it's just yep. like, it's ridiculous, man. Now you call yeah. babies illegal. What yeah. the? Oh, my God. Dude, Trash. this is where we live in. They're, they're the pro life, but they're more uh, as long as you're uh, born within born within these borders. It may be big. right. Well, they're more. I, I think. Uh, let's be clear. They they're uh, pro American life, right? Like put America first. But they understand. I mean, you, but you you know, but not necessarily. I mean, you're American. The the, the black American is it? <laughs> you know, the Native Zing! American. <laughs> Good job, Sally. Good job. Because that's where I was headed. I was headed there. Like it's the Americans first is, is put America first, but then it's well let's 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 be clear, put white Americans first. And if we're gonna go even further, let's put white American white women first, and then we go there, white American white babies come first. So in Fox News, what they really were saying rich, is, I can't believe first. Well, what Fox News is really saying was that I can't believe you feed all these brown immigrant yeah. babies when, when there's a perfectly good healthy white baby american white baby out there that's not getting enough formula it's like yo man um it's just for ridiculous the record, it is ridiculous and look I, I don't breastfeed i can't breastfeed it's not that i a thing that i can do but it's been proven that breastfeeding is the best thing for the baby's period right, but so, some women can't do it and after a yeah couple they can't months, produce enough a milk, lot of it right? stops so it's right. whatever right no so, one just needs to chill the hell out man yeah i agree i agree so it remind me what you're of the old joke i used to say about how like i'm like yeah my brother wanted to adopt a baby but he's like oh it's really hard i was like what's tough about it the paperwork <laughs> the, the adoption <laughs> process he's like nah it's really hard to find a pure all white baby. And I'm like, you're so pure all white. You're supposed to raise a kid, not snort it. Nice. That was good. I That's, remember that uh, one. That was that. I think you kind of helped me with that. Come up with that. Yeah, I did. When you hit me with that pure white, I was like, oh boy, we got to go to cocaina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to go to the yeah. cocaina. It's so hard to find a pure all white baby. That joke always uncut, does a, well though. <laughs> yeah, it does. A pure all white uncut baby, right? Like. <laughs> A baby, a pure white baby with no, we don't want any, uh, you know, you don't want any uh, down the line. You don't want any Native American. You don't want any black. You don't want any Asian, no Latin. It's like pure. This is Anglo-Saxon straight from Europe, Scandinavia, where it's, you know, where there's snow, right? Like where the, the snow is un, pure as the undriven snow. That's where you want the baby from. Right? <laughs> so, uh, Yo, man, it's a crazy world. The other part of the crazy world is... Uh, there was just a mass shooting in Buffalo. Um, yeah. Buffalo, New York, upstate. Yeah, and I, um, I know a comic who's up there right now, and I just texted him and said, I'm like, uh, I was like, shit, man, aren't you in Buffalo? But he hadn't written me back, so hopefully he didn't go grocery shopping today. Yeah, I guess it's still a, de- a developing story at this point. There's no, um, 
they don't know how many people have been injured, but they know that the multiple shots were fired and multiple people are injured at a, a Buffalo supermarket. Um, but the thing is this, man, this has become, a, has become commonplace in this country. And it's been commonplace in this country for a long time now. I mean, we're, we're 20 years deep into, into, and maybe even more, 20 years yeah, or more. Columbine was what? 99. Wow. Okay. So, so yeah, we're 20, 23 looking at 23 years of mass shootings in this country. And honestly, I don't see it changing. Like, I don't see why it would change. It's getting worse. It's getting it's worse. Getting worse. Florida getting just worse. passed the bill where you don't need, you don't need anything to carry a gun right on your waist, walking yeah. around the motherfucker. Right. Right. Get the hell out of here. I want to yeah. go grocery shopping and see some guy walking with a gun on him. Oh man! Why? That's, Why? Yo. How little is your dick that you need a gun on you at all times? Ain't the wild, wild west? Oh, fuck yourself! You want to be cowboys? Nice, idiots, dude! It's so I love, annoying. I love that you made the correlation between dick size and guns. Usually, it's trucks. Mm-hmm. It's like the bigger the right. truck, the smaller the dick. Uh, Sal's like, yo, you got a pistol? Mm, you got a little, you got a little weenie, little oh, weenie, it's, little it's, bitty, bitty. I never. And look, man, you know, I know I've got friends and I'm in and and like I've said before, the Canadian hunters, some of the coolest, you know, gun owner people I know. And, um, and, you know, and I have brought fun with my buddy, Joe. We went to Missouri and went shooting. But like uh, this wackiness now with these guys with weapons and just, you know, loading up in militia and friggin. Uh, I don't know, man. Anybody has access. That's the problem. I don't like right. how easy it is that some wacko can just have a gun at any moment. Right. And that's right. that's that. And people act like they, ugh, it's not even taking your guns, ask, asking people to be responsible about it. You right. know what I mean? Right. And that's yeah. all. Well, I have, I have a number of friends that own guns. And uh, it's funny, man, because it's interesting because, you know, I'll talk to them about it. And a lot of times their take is when a government got guns. Why shouldn't I have been? Why hey, well, that's like a paranoid thing. But yeah, hey, you could have a gun, but you got to pass the fucking right kind of test to get a handgun. That's all you need. Or a right. shotgun. All right. 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 Or a rifle for well, hunting. Well, what are you using a handgun for? I mean, now rifles and going for, hunting. People could say for house protection. And yeah, but, but a handgun can't kill as many people as an AR-15 or whatever. Well, yeah, not as quickly. You got to have, and with a handgun, you got to have perfectly good aim. But right. look, man, I did, I didn't, did I talk about this yet? I did an episode of America's Most Wanted, and I talked about working with the weapons expert on yes. that episode. I talked about yeah. that on the podcast, right? I think so, but okay. remind me. Well, basically, long story short, if you're talking about home protection, this guy who was the weapons expert from the TV oh, show. Oh, right, right, okay. Right, 24. He talked about getting a shotgun, right? Yeah. He said that the worst thing you want to do is get a handgun because they're inaccurate and they're high caliber. You do way more damage to the person you miss. I mean, you do way more damage to the people behind that person or to the property behind because they go on forever. So right. handguns, honestly, handguns are meant for up close and personal to do mm. damage and to kill people. That's just what it is. It ain't, look, a range, a rifle with a scope, if you're going out deer hunting or moose hunting or whatever you hunt for food okay i get it but all that other high caliber shit elephants elephant guns and giraffe why are you killing exotic animals anyway right there's right. it's not like you're gonna eat them right right like it's just trophies so right. that shit need to be taken care of uh and no handguns yo straight up we need to get rid of all that bullshit or at least make it so <laughs> hard to get them straight up make them so well, hard we're to not get. like we're we're so far that's such a left thinking that we're the uh-huh. government's not even that close Right. They can't even, they even had one of their own go against uh, passing the law that everyone could get an abortion. Right. They right. they try to pass it in the Senate more just as a symbolic thing, but even the West Virginia guy won't do it. So it's crazy, man. We're going more and more conservative in this country. And uh, I don't know, scary times. They, you know, well, they, they let right, the well, devil in the door. <laughs> dude, but see, this is the thing, though. You got to keep this in mind. Right. And you and I weren't here. We, we weren't alive in this country when there was no, um, you know, right to an abortion. Right. We didn't right. live in the we've world. Never, we've never seen that. We've never seen that world. But we've heard the stories. Mm-hmm. Right. We've heard of the world when abortion was not legal. And you know what happened when abortion wasn't legal? It didn't stop people from getting abortions. Right. 
right? It made people them still dangerous. Gotta, it it made life more dangerous for people because they were because they still want to do the thing. This is the thing. This is the issue I have with that whole thing with Roe v. Wade potentially being disbanded or getting you know removed or whatever, and abortion becoming illegal. I don't believe that the government has the right to tell anybody what to do with their bodies. Look, you can't tell people what to do with their body. We are autonomous of our set. Like we own, I own this. This is me, right? Now, the, now look, the government can tell me not to go to a certain place because of laws and rules and like there's no, there's rules within society, but you can't tell me what to do with my own body. If I want to go get piercings through my cheek that come out the other side, then goddamn it, I can do that. If I want to go get my eyebrows tattooed on and off or whatever, I can do that. If I want to clip, if I want to change my joint from a from a dick to a pussy, then I got that right to do that, right? Like you can't tell people what to do with their bodies, and women should have the right to own and control their bodies. It's as simple as that. So the fact that the government is even considering talking about what people can do with their bodies it's a, it's a moot point from the beginning they shouldn't even it shouldn't even be a, a, a topic of discussion and now that's what's going to change which is kind of scary i know which uh, well you know what's going to happen look man i've been saying this forever the pendulum swings right the pendulum swing it goes from one side to the other side and once it gets over there shit gets gets crazy and then it swings all the way back around this is why we as people have to die, right? Because if we live forever, then we just live through the same bullshit over and over and over again. That's why we have to die. The I thought you were gonna of- say that's why we have to vote. What the- <laughs> no. yeah, voting, I mean- voting don't. I, I hate to look. I believe in my vote. My vote counts because I vote. All right, right, there you go. That's all. That- yeah, but come on, man. I mean, with yeah, the manipulation. It's- uh, the, mis- manipu- the manipulation the misinformation right and then people not being smart enough to to understand oh, when the government turns into a one uh, issue so debate, crazy that's right? what's that's the problem is like how easily manipulated it's so Americans easy to are. manipulate people and and hold up and look i got nothing against religion right i actually think that religion is a good thing when it's used properly i think that what messes up religion is people right people's misinterpretation or their interpretation or their use of it it's the same thing with money people are like money is the root of evil no money is not the root of all evil people all right are the root of all evil it's what people do if i put a hundred dollars on the table the money is not going to get up and wreak havoc around the world but people trying to get to that money that's the but problem. i mean someone seeing that money might set them off but it's not the money, it's the people. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's the but if people. that money didn't exist, they could never have that feeling. Yeah, but come on, what are we gonna go back to a barter <laughs> system? All right, Sal, I'll I'll uh, I'll fix your toilet if you if you give me a some some leather for new shoes. That's funny like, you mentioned yeah, that. I I fixed my toilet this week, so you you know uh, the you know what they call the little thing that goes up and then lets all the water in and then goes down and lets it rise again. No, what is that? It's the flapper. Uh, that's just called the flapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, <laughs> I, I bought one and I hooked it on, and so far, because the old one, the flapper's got like two little hooks on it, right? Okay. One on each end, and the one, the one hook would pop off, uh, and so okay, and then it'd be like, well, and then good. you have to put your hand in there and fix it, and then right. and, uh, well, I'm, so. I'm glad to hear your toilet works because you know last episode we had a nice discussion about all right we're all about <laughs> the, the green compost toilets. yeah exactly uh, so wait, let me just finish this though I'll finish this thought and then we can move on um, I think this is bogus that we live in a world where the government can decide what people do with their bodies um, especially in regards to something like having a kid um, you know. If you're not ready to have a kid, there's no way. As a person who has a kid, there's no way anybody should be forced to do this, right? And I get, you know, you can abstain. There's contraception, con- contraception, con- con- you know, contraceptives. Like there's there are ways to go about preventing the whole thing. But then there's also other situations where, you know, other things can happen. I won't get into all the details where people can get pregnant by other means and they want to terminate the pregnancy, right? Um, I think that people should have the right and the ability to do that. And if you are religious and you get pregnant, then, and it goes against your beliefs, then you should absolutely not have an abortion. <laughs> but if, if someone else, hormones, they're young, whatever the case may be, 
they're experimenting, they're adventuring, they're trying, they're living, they do something, they get pregnant, and they decide, you know what, I'm not in a position to raise a kid, then they should have the right to terminate that pregnancy. That's just what it is. Whatever your beliefs are about it, that can be your beliefs, but you should not impose those beliefs on other people. That's the problem I have with all this stuff, right? Like, I don't, I think religion is a good thing in the sense of, like, the overall message, right? The message is usually pretty good. Um, it's how people interpret it and then how they deliver it that that manipulates it and and um, it's used a lot of times in way evil they ways. weaponize it that's what it is they weaponize it right and they use it to control people that's where i have a problem with it and that's about the people so um so yeah man it's kind of crazy we live in this world where they don't want to feed babies at the border right people have access to guns and now in florida you can you can carry openly or concealed right so now everybody's on high alert because who guns knows? Guns that you could get like that day. Like you don't even need to pass anything now. Oh, wow. No, you don't have, there's no waiting period to get a gun. You no, can walk in. no, I just get one that day. Oh my God. It's a wild, terrible. wild west out well, here, bro. Hey, man. That guy me... who went around and shot those uh, those ladies and those people in those salons in Atlanta, Georgia, he got his gun that day. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, and then you got then you got the Supreme Court trying to decide what people should and shouldn't do with their bodies man that's just nuts to me that's nuts but you know i mean i guess you said we could vote but we got to educate people and if we don't educate people and that's another one talk about education the lack of funding for education the lack of teachers right like all of it's intertwined man it's all connected and so you know when there's one cog in the system it just it trickles down and it messes up everything right yeah so yeah, um, it's uh it's crazy and it's crazy how close like things could have been different you know if uh you know just one person wins this election or if this justice stayed alive for this long or if they resigned oh, yeah. during their this other person's presidency or you know the bullshit that obama's pick is not allowed to get in but we could rush one in Yo, four years later oh it's <laughs> so hypocrisy it's just disgusting it's so hypocritical dude it's, it's disgusting you know the thing that bugged me is that like and they get away with it. They blatantly Always, get away yeah. with it. Yeah, Always. yeah, with a smile Always. on their face. But let me, I, I think I said this a long time ago, and I'm going to say it again. Yo, man, these Republicans, these motherfuckers are playing chess, not checkers. I swear to God, they are looking down the line. While, while as Democrats are looking at what's in front of them, the Republicans are like, yo, we trying to get federal judges in the system way down the line, right? Like right. They, they going to the bottom, to the very last courts to try to get judges in so that those judges will move up the system and be the ones available for you know for these positions so um that's the problem sometimes man is everyone's just focusing on about what's right in front of their face and not looking ahead and then you're going up against people who are like yeah i see what you're looking at but i'm also looking down there so you got to be a va- you got to be aware of both of them like yeah yeah these these motherfuckers is next level man um right, also well, uh i'll go ahead reg well i was gonna say the next one is if you want to go there um uh, we're talking about the world and we're talking about how chaotic it is at some point we're going to talk about some good things about the world too but um this whole situation with russia and the ukraine and this war and what russia's recently done to to finland right russia has cut the power in finland and then they warned finland that they would do this if they if they were to join nato now look (laughs) I feel like it's like this. It's like, yo, Reg, if you go get boxing lessons, I'm going to punch you in the face, right? I go look at boxing lessons and you come back, you punch me in the face. Now you understand that I have to go get boxing lessons <laughs> at this point, right? <laughs> like, like the idea is this. If Russia is going to try to strong arm people into not being in a position to protect, to protect themselves or take care of themselves, then that's a clear indication to all those countries around Russia. We absolutely need NATO because the bully with the stick is only, only as big as you let him be until everybody else around him got sticks too. Right. You know, what I find interested in that is how you kind of compared yourself to being uh, Finland. And I'm kind of thinking, why would Russia be scared of Finland? That's more like, you know, finland baggins right <laughs> frodo finland like you know why, why are you so scared of finland well, they, they gotta shut off the power now no, they're gonna join nato big deal no, they're upset with finland because 
if you if you look at the map of Russia, yeah, right, I'll put it put them right on their border. It's but like Finland, deal. straight up. It's Finland, it's it's um, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and then you come down. There's Belarus, and then there's Ukraine, right? right. Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania already in NATO. So, well, you're not allowed to be their neighbor. Is that it? Is that what well, Russia? You're not well, allowed Russia's, to be our neighbor. <laughs> yo, straight up, Russia's concern is that, like, yo, all these countries have NATO, then they could potentially, they they're looking at it as potential threats, right? But when like, have they ever threatened them? You know what I mean? No, I know, but it's fear. Fear is not rational. They're not bro. the ones invading countries right now. It's fear absurd. Is not the fear is not rational. That's why I'm like, yo. If all the little countries, if all the little countries join NATO and they just say, yo, man, cut the shit out or we all coming in, right? Because Russia is only, I think it's 170 billion people or something in Russia. If the rest of the world joins forces, now China, they got China on their side and China's... Oof, that's a big number, man. They got China China's, and Russia. China's a, a billion. lot of people. Yeah. No, it's I'm sorry. Billion. Russia, no, Russia's not a 100 and something billion. Russia's only a hundred and... 70 million people right because the u.s is roughly cold. 300 million plus right so but but they got china and china's coming in a billion strong but their military is not a billion so that's just you know and it's a lot of it's a lot of poverty in china bro it's a lot of people who are poor and russia the problem with russia is its location right there's a lot of ice and snow up there. <laughs> it's like you got to get through some rough terrain. Well, they're having a tough time with Ukraine right now. They're getting, you know, they can't, they're not, you know, people thought it'd be a lot quicker than it's okay. out to be. So this is what I, that's the point I'm trying to make, right? You're talking about Russia being this big. Russia is the big dude that it was like, oh man, I don't want to challenge him. Look, he's he's 6'8, 285 pounds. Oh my goodness. And then he gets into a fight with a little dude, and a little dude is skilled, and you go. Oh shit, this little dude might fuck this big dude up. <laughs> big dude is just big. <laughs> he, he just been posturing his whole life. He don't know how to fight. He ain't never really been in a fight, right? He just been big and everybody been backing up because he's big. But one little dude come up like, yo, all right, come up, put them hands on him, sock him a couple of times. Big dude's like, oh shit. So are you saying we should start a war with Russia and just put him away? No, knock this bully out? <laughs> I'm, not that that. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, I think that if if Russia is going to cut the the power to countries for fear that they may join an organization, I think that all the countries around Russia need to join that organization. Because right. if they do it to one, they're going to do it to another. They're bullies, right? And all right. of a sudden, at some point, Vladimir Putin, he's got to be, hey, man, sheer numbers alone, you just go, God damn, all right, I can't fuck with, I can't fuck with 27 countries, Right. <laughs> Well, not a lot of those countries have that much of a military. I mean, yeah, Russia no, still has one of the biggest military. And it doesn't matter when you get nuclear weapons involved. Yeah, but this is you all know what, so crazy, man. It is. But even with the nuclear weapons, man, look, those countries are so close. <laughs> if Russia was to bomb anybody in Europe with the with the fallout from all that shit, like the 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 radiation clouds and the, the winds and everything else, Russia in essence would be bombing themselves right it's not like you get away yeah, from because of the, yeah 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 because of proximity saying. yeah it's like well did you see they were uh in chernobyl they were going into the red forest which is considered one of the most polluted places on the planet and they and they went in there and it's still like radiating with all kinds of stuff radiation uranium and, yeah. and uh they uh yeah it's like and they call it the red forest because it instantly turned red after the 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 meltdown and then of course like everything's like died and now it's just nothing there but the russian soldiers were like making fucking foxborough holes or whatever foxholes burrowing in there and making trenches and uh yeah they were all exposed to this so see that's why that's why knowledge reigns supreme <laughs> yeah right right, right? right? Like you, it was an unnecessary you didn't even need to involve it yeah exactly you didn't know like, you go in there and now you're exposed to radiation. That's your ass, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's your yeah, ass, yeah. right? And uh, and who's and this is the other one. Who's sending these people? It's always the people at the top sending yeah, the people man, at the bottom. Yeah, man, it's rich sending the poor to go fight the wars. Yeah, it's just, man. It's terrible. All right, did we done with CNN Steel? What, I think uh, so. Yeah. Let's well, go. Well, all right, what's next? Well, I got something. I got a little advice. Okay. So yesterday, I, I you know, 
It was hot. It's hot out here, bro. It's like 90 degrees. I had to get up, turn the fan on right now. It's hot. Oh, We're wow. going to have to keep this shit on the tight ship so I can get back in the room with the air conditioning. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I felt like, you know, I felt like going to get like a sushi roll with uh, some veggie tempura. Love so, sushi, by the way. One of my I favorite love foods. sushi, but you got to get it at the right spot. Now, the place <laughs> I really like, it's like, it's, it's a couple blocks away. Okay. Big blocks. It's, you know, this is a New York blocks. This is a this is San LA Francisco. Blocks. But LA blocks are like fucking huge, like multiple football fields. <laughs> like an LA block is like four blocks, right? It's at least, <laughs> at least. It's insane. I've All never right. seen it before. I'm like, God damn, these blocks are fucking huge. <laughs> Especially between Sunset and Hollywood, it depends right. on where you are. But where I am, it's pretty damn far. Right. And it's hot. And I was like, well, I don't want to go to a good place. I don't need all that. I'm going to go to the place over here. They got this to t- t- burn this and that. Blah, blah. Hold up, so well, can, can we address this real quick? Hold that thought. And I, I need for everyone out there listening and watching this to understand what he just said. I don't want to go to the good place. <laughs> really? It's what? too hot. Dude, there should never be a debate about whether or not you go get well, the here's the thing. good food. The other place was good before. I've gotten stuff there before, okay. but you know, a roll. You know, there's, there's usually like the smaller rolls where the you know, the, and they got the, uh, the, the, the 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 seaweed around it and the tuna in the middle or whatever. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's a roll. Well, it's a tuna right. roll. <laughs> I got some rolls. Okay. Okay. Which one? Please you got tuna rolls. I feel like I feel like you don't. Know, if you're gonna go sushi, don't go right when they open, because <laughs> you're gonna get the uh, the leftovers from the last shift. Finish that off, and then they go into the fresh stuff. That's how I feel. So I I did it right when they opened, and I don't know, man. And 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 then one this will tick me off. I got a shrimp shrimp tempura roll, Bruh, You looked at it. There was two two layers of rice. Two little uh, layers, and of then rice? the shrimp tempura. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like what's <laughs> that? It's supposed to be a one la- raw layer. Yeah, they did rice on rice, and then a tiny little shrimp tempura. Like that's the shit that I felt like morning shift or afternoon shift. Yeah, here's a tiny shrimp because they were closed, and then they reopened at five. Hey, dude, uh, <laughs> that's funny. And then Basically... I woke up this morning a little early. And I had a little tummy problems, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm just saying it might not have been the best move. I and never, I had like a spicy tuna. It was, I don't know. I'm not gonna ever do it again. I'll tell you that. And then okay. the, the veggie tempura that I got tastes like goddamn donut batter. Like it tasted like I was oh, having terrible Krispy Kreme and broccoli do not go well. <laughs> <laughs> hey dude, that's why you can't go, you always gotta go to the good place. Right. But that's funny. I don't think I've ever heard of the uh, the French fry version of sushi. You know how like you order your food and then they give you a ton of fries and that's all the filler. Right. Yeah. Like you get breakfast food and they give you a ton of home potatoes and hash browns. That's all filler. Right. Yeah. You're like, that's what that rice is. That's what that rice was. That rice was all filler. You're like, yo, can I get more shrimp? Right. Can yeah. I, get- I got to a point where I only ate one of them or two of them, the whole thing. And I just right. ate the middle out. And I was like, the <laughs> hell with this. And then the worst thing, the one thing that does suck about sushi, and I love sushi rolls, right, is the, the rice expansion afterwards. You kind of get, whoa, you know what I mean? Because right, right, rice right. expands while you digest it. Now, if I was really balling, I'd have to go to like a top executive place. Then I, I, I'd sashimi the shit out of that place. I love, I mean, because that's the real stuff. If you have really good sashimi, yeah, that's the real yeah. deal. You know, sashimi what I mean? is a, legit. Yeah, I'm with you that. But rolls are fun and rolls are creative, and I oh know, man, I love them. Dragon rolls, rainbow rolls, spider rolls, yeah. right? Like they're delicious, man. I love them. I do. I yeah. love them. But there's one thing that I will, I never skimp on food ever. I don't care. Look, I would much rather pay more money. And this is why I shop at Whole Foods. Give me, I'll pay more money for good food and safe, healthy food versus paying less for cheap food. It's just money. Well, this, is, this was more, not this one about the money. This is about the walk. <laughs> yeah, but you said, I, you said the good place. Well, they were still pretty, you know, uh price wise well this other place so i did get you get other stuff like the it's not 
you know, I got soup with it too and seaweed right. salad. You get miso, like, miso soup. Right, right, right. So, but yeah, no, I, I yeah, but I, but I didn't want to walk in the heat with raw fish. You know, yeah, you gotta you gotta eat it there. You can't you can't be yeah. in that heat walking with sushi. That's right, just all bad. Right. That's well, a, that's that's my point. That's a recipe for like tummy problems. Which is what you had? Did you? So you didn't eat it there. You went there and got it, and then went yeah, back home. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's only like a block away. The close yeah, one. You, yeah, but you just said a block is like five blocks. One well, block is like the other one was even further. That's why I didn't go to the okay. good one. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. But no, yeah. I mean, okay. So if you're doing sushi, see what I don't like, and I don't know why they even still have them. I get it if you're on the street just walking and it's easy, but the hand roll. Was just like a seaweed cone with rice and then the right. fish on the top. Yeah. You ever ever order those ever? Nah, nah. Yeah, it's all rolls, I, right? I eat those. I've I've seen those, and I'm just gonna be honest. I've seen those, and I always go, hey, "How do you eat that? Like you just it's like ice cream, just, really? But uh, yeah, ice you know, cream cone. You just you, bite. You don't lick. Yeah. Nah, damn that. Yo, give me give me the chopsticks. Give me the so- chopsticks. Give me my wasabi, my soy sauce. Let me put my little make my little concoction right i do that too do you mix it so it's like creamy do you start with a little wasabi a little soy and then you get a little um yeah i don't go too heavy as you go well i don't get too heavy with the wasabi because i saw a um me neither I, it's spicy well it's spicy but i saw a show i saw some show where they were talking to japanese chefs or you know people from japan who who were talking about sushi right and they were talking about how you're supposed to eat sushi the whole idea, like they were like in America, the people they drown the food with the with the with the soy sauce and the wasabi. Like it's too much, right? It's literally like you make it and it's supposed to be just a dab, right? Because the whole idea of the sushi is to be able to taste whatever food it is yeah. you're eating, right? Like if it's the tuna, if it's the if it's the salmon, if it's the unagi, if it's the shrimp, whatever it is, or the, uh, the avocado. The the avocado, the tobacco, <laughs> yeah, the right, like whatever it is, even the seaweed. So they're like, you're supposed to just put just a dab, like it's supposed to be just a dab. To, I mean, to yeah, I don't bathe it. Up. I'll do like a one hat, one side, get a little, because a lot of times it's a big fucking thing of rice. Right, right. You know what right. I mean? So, but uh, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. But yeah, so I, I love sushi, man. Look, I could do sushi every day. I'm not yeah, even sushi's joking. bomb, dude. It's sushi's the bomb, bomb, dude. You know, I don't yeah. like either this place. Every roll they still the filling was the same like little slivers of cucumber i'm like not very creative dude you're right. losing sushi love next time i'll walk in the heat and just eat in a restaurant like reggie said or i don't know walk well back. i mean i've that's... walked it before it's not bad sushi doesn't like it holds well it, put it a does little container, uh, you know look it's I only like in... a, you know not too long of a walk hey man back in the day when i used to go get sushi by myself right like i was i i'm not joking i would go get sushi like once a week and I would go spend like 50 bucks and it was all sashimi, right? I'm getting the two oh, pieces. All the sashimi, yeah. Oh man, I would get, I'd be like, yo, let me get like, I love the unagi, the unagi. You give me that oh, joint. The eel? Which the is eel. funny because that one's cooked. It is. I love that one. Also love salmon. I love salmon. it too though. I used, I can't do spicy tuna anymore. Spicy tuna I, now I'm gives over me. It. And yeah. I think that's what hurt my stomach. Yeah. And, uh, you know another one I, I'm not a huge fan of the raw salmon. Oh, I love raw salmon. I don't know. I've I never really I just I, love all, I don't know. Dude, I like I the yellowtail all, and the tuna, but I don't know about the salmon. Dude, I love all the raw. Give me raw, 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 raw. You know what I don't like so, either? The fucking egg. Get that out of here. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of egg. I'm like, I don't need little, I've never seen a rectangle egg before. Yeah, I don't need the egg. I'm good on the egg. I I can make eggs at home, right? When I go get sushi, I want to go get something right. that I can't that, have, something right. I can't make at home, right? Right. Like, man, you bring me some scrambled eggs. Nah, this shit I did. So, all right, man, let's move on from sushi because well, we've been on sushi. One more thing like, I want to say okay. because you love the salmon. I had a friend I used to cater with, and he was a pretty cool dude, and he went. Up to Alaska during salmon season, oh. and he said they camped right along the river, which probably wasn't smart, probably during the bear season. But those <laughs> bears probably love them rivers. Yeah. But um, he said they would just go right into the river and grab salmon, and they just would cut it up right there, and they made their own sushi right there. 
Wow. It. And it was like, he was like, it was the best I ever had. It was the freshest ever. And of like, course. when you have stuff that is so fresh, you taste it. Man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'll share this. This is weird. Talk about like literally catching something, gutting it, cleaning it, and then eating it. I mean, when I was a kid, I was about 17. Um, my mom and I, and my cousin went to the Bahamas. And I remember being on the beach and these, you know, the people who lived there would go down these conch, they would go down and get conch shells, right? And they would come up with the conch shell. And I remember seeing he had the knife. He knew right where to do it. He, he basically would break into the shell and like stab the, the conch or whatever it is inside, right? Uh -huh. He stab it, it die. It would cut, it would break loose from the shell. And then, well, he'd not break loose, but it would die. And then he'd take the knife and he cut whatever part is connected to the shell. He pulled it out. I watched this dude do this. He pulled it out and then he just cut just along it. Like, cause the outside is all slimy. Uh -huh. He cut just along, along the outside, peel back the skin and take the muscle and was like, mm. In raw? Dude, oh, I saw a dude do that. I saw them do it several times. What did times. you do? Did you like have some? No, I didn't have any. I was just sitting there like this. <laughs> I was like, yo, that's crazy. Dude just went down, got a conch shell, stabbed the thing, cut the thing out of it, cut, sl slit it, peeled back the slimy part, exposed the muscle, and ate that shit straight out the ocean, bro. I was like, hey, man, and I tell you, when I was in Venezuela. <laughs> We stayed in this, it was uh, it was like 10 years ago, 20 years, no, 20 years ago now. Wow. And we stayed in this little village in the rainforest and you can only get there by boat because it was like on a peninsula and it's surrounded by rainforest. So we stayed in there and they, they, it was five miles in. And I remember the guy we went with, we asked him like, how far is the village? Cause he, he was there before he's from Venezuela. He's been to this little village town and he's like, ah, oh, it's a, it's a you know, five minutes in five minutes in. So we're carrying all this fresh water you have to bring. And yeah. after like two miles, we're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Five minutes. It's like <laughs> five. And then we figured he meant five miles. Right. Oh. So, so we walked finally five miles. We get into the village. Da, da, da. It was an awesome experience. We stayed there, but every day, morning they would have this school bus that goes down to the ocean and all uh, the people would get on and they go fishing for the village and i saw this kid like we we went one time we would just go down to the beach and hang and it's funny like when we're walking on the, the stone pebbles because we saw the bus we're like let's jump on the bus so we could get a ride back so we don't have to walk right we're rocking and we're stepping on the pebbles i'm like ah ah and all these little that is why the kids are running around me laughing how I, i'm getting hurt just walking and their bare feet all callous stuff have no problem oh, right? yeah yeah I'm laughing at me they'll see my tattoo because i'm a homer they're like homero homero you're right, right so right, right. uh so they uh i saw this kid on the bus man with a fucking lobster like this big oh, and it yeah. was blue it was like it was on the bus moving just live and he's bringing that home and he's like eight years old wait like a it was like a blue tail like a a blue fin, blue tail lobster is that a thing blue i don't know some kind of lobster blue shell, it was, yeah it was blue a blue, shell big lobster. ass was that i mean now blue lobsters are very 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 rare it's one okay. of the rarest things but but yeah it was a lobster and he was holding it and it's moving yeah and he's just like holding it out and i was just like on this bus with this kid on this like old school bus taking yeah. it back into town yeah man i gotta tell you uh personally and then we can move on. Um, and look, man, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna kill nothing. I let, let look if I if I had to kill my food to live, I'd be a vegetarian, bro. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I would be a collard green, black eyed peas, uh, spinach, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, potatoes, carrots. I what eating... about what about the cows? Would you would you milk the cows? Nah, I don't even drink milk now. I don't drink cow's milk. I need almonds. I drink almond well, milk. Well, you so. ain't going to be able to make almond milk on your own, smashing almonds and shit. Dude, whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying that if I had to kill something to, to survive, then look, not to survive, but if I had to kill my own food, I'm not killing it. I'm not I'm not yeah, breaking I mean, chickens' yeah, necks and plucking it. birds yeah. and shit. Nah, my grandma that. used to do that. My grandma used to break chicken necks back on the farm. Oh, yeah. Well, my Uncle Pip, he wasn't my real uncle. He's my next door neighbor, but like extended family. I remember he got some chickens one time and so there was these chickens in his backyard right next to my backyard. And he wouldn't let me see him cut the chicken head off. But I had I did see 
like what happened after he cut the head, like running, he, uh... right? And then the body gets up, take out, <laughs> and then you know he take it, get the feet, and just start plucking feathers off of it. Uh, I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm Jeez. good. If I gotta kill my food to live, I mean, not to live, but if I gotta kill my food, I mean, I'm just a vegetarian, bro. I'm a I'm a vegan vegetarian. I'm eating mushrooms. I love mushrooms. I'm eating, <laughs> I mean, I mean, all kind of shit that ain't alive. As far as like, I can't. I'm not. I'm not. I would never. I can't. This is a Patrice O'Neill joke, but I can't kill something that got eyebrows, right? Because if they got eyebrows, you, I feel like they could be like, <laughs> like oh, mm. you know what I mean? Like they can be all sad and shit. He, right, he, right, said, right. he made a point about fish. He was like, he's like, oh, I could kill a fish because a fish ain't got eyebrows. Like the whole time, no matter. He's like, you could stab a fish and they just be like. I mean, yeah, when I was in Venezuela, they had the fish head still on there. So I'm just eating its guts. Like, hey, buddy, how are you doing? Ugh, yes. But I don't want but, you know, a lot of people serve their fish. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather not. I'd rather it be headless. But what do you want? You know, same yeah. with shrimp, you know. Right. When in Rome, right? All right, right. Okay. Well, wrap us up. What's our final topic? Oh wait, hold up. Are we already there? Okay. Yeah, All right, man, let's get we're it. Flying by. Well, I would say we're gonna last... have something fun. Uh oh, my buddy says yes, I'm okay. Oh, good. All right. So that's good to hear. I um, like that comment. Well, this is okay. So two things. One, uh, so the Warriors have advanced to the eat to the Western Conference Finals. But knee grabbers bunch of knee grabbers did you see he had his hand on his waist and then he pulled the knee i was like ugh. i mean yeah, now look ugh. i can't imagine him i mean being I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna say it's dirty but these warriors get so fucking lucky with injury dude players. well hold up though i mean they lost gary payton brooks brooks oh they did they pretty, got screwed with gary payton That's yeah they true. got they got screwed That's with gary true. payton jr um but like now it's like every playoff series it's just like he's injured He's injured. There's an Achilles. There's an ACL. There's and in basketball, it's so important. Hamstring. Oh, dude. It's just like, I feel like the people have gotten stronger and more agile, but they've they become less durable. That's why LeBron seems to be like, like this, this man amongst boys, right? And his durability yeah. and his endurance. But if you think about it, back in the day, dude, you didn't lose that many people to like, you know, I mean, if they if you lost somebody, you lost them for the whole season. Like now right. it's like everybody's hamstring is like, oh, he's got a hamstring thing, so he's going to be out for three games, right? Like, this guy got hit, so he's going to be out for two games. He twisted his ankle, he's going to be out for three. It's just like, dude, but it's constantly happening, right? So, my, uh, I was telling my boy, I said, he's asked, I was kind of suggesting who I was rooting for. I was like, uh, Giannis and Luca, I'm rooting for the Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I don't know the way Boston's playing right now. Boston. Well, is... that was well. Yeah, I was surprised at how bad they went down. So it's, it's game seven Sunday. So we'll probably drop this on Monday, so we won't know the results. So game seven Sunday, it's Boston versus Milwaukee, and uh, the Dallas Mavericks versus the Phoenix Suns. All right, so, so who both you those got? games who you got should the, be good. Who do you got? I mean, I'm rooting Phoenix. for Dallas Milwaukee, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, you know, I, I'm right, not too rooting for. I know I, Phoenix is good, but I don't Phoenix know. Phoenix is good, but I have to admit, man, I do. I respect Devin Booker's game because the guy can play. The, the kid can go. It ain't no question about yeah. it. The guy can play. And Luca, he's, he's got been a, great. Yeah, but he, Devin Booker, he got a little bit of an attitude. Like his attitude uh, turns me off. I watch him. And nah, I, go, nah, I like him and Luca chipping, though. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, but it's like, it's chippy stuff that I'm kind of like, ah, uh, that's whatever. So. Um, I don't like Devin Booker's attitude, but the guy can play. I respect his ability to play the game. I give him that. He's he's a killer. Ain't no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, he's great. Um, I like Luca. Luca's legit. He just, you know, he's just he's playing, just a hard player. Um, Giannis and the Bucks, Celtics. Man, I don't know who's gonna come the out of Bucks that. Bucks got screwed with good... Middleton being injured. That hurt. Well, there you go. He's out. And it was the problem. And I'm gonna tell you right now, because they're already talking about it. They're like, well, there's a chance that Middleton could come back. No, he's not. I already saw something. He's out. Okay, good. Because I was gonna say, whenever they try to bring some somebody back, it never works. It never works. It you never can't be works. the savior first game back. Well, and you throw off the rhythm, right? Because yeah. guys have been playing with the rhythm without you now, and then you they they plop you back in and you're not a hundred percent, then it throws off everything. So I'm glad to hear that's not the case. Uh, I'm glad right, to hear so you. Hold up, who do you think is going to be in the final? Oh, go ahead. And then I realized, and this is a, this is I'm trying to watch what I say because uh, Festus Ezeli and I, who play for the Warriors, we yeah. were we we were kind of talking on Instagram recently 
um, you know, because he's Nigerian, right? right? And then Shannon Sharp posted this video and it was about Nigeria and, you know, about him being, Shannon Sharp did his ancestry and he's 90% Nigerian, wow. right? Um, and, uh, and Festus was like, yo, when I saw this, he's like, you're the first person I thought of, you know, Reggie Steele. And I go, I go, oh man, that's cool. Whatever, thanks for the shout out. But I said, I'm, I'm lightweight upset with Shannon because he beat me because he's he's 90%, I'm 85% Nigerian. Wow. Right, I was like, he, I was like, he got me by 5%. I'm like, damn. And then Festus was like, yo, where you been, man? What's going on? Whatever. So um, I was like, yo, let's take this to DMs. But I was thinking that Festus might be a guy that we could potentially reach out to as far Probably as a guest. That'd be great. Yeah, right? especially we should have him on one of the finals. So then he give us a uh, talk and then and he's, uh, whatever he's else he the, wants to talk about. Exactly. And he's in the Bay right now because he's doing some commentating for the games. But oh, nice. um, I do not want to bring him on here if you're gonna be like warrior so oh, oh, no, I won't, I won't, but I would definitely I wouldn't have to look it up, but I, I I know he was there during one or two of the I 2015 or 2016. I'm really interested in those he was series. there for 2015. I would love so to he, talk to him if he was during those. He, was he wasn't there for, there for 2016. No, he was there. He was there. Was he that yeah. I mean I would love, yeah, it would just be great. But yeah. so he's 100 percent Nigerian, he was born and raised there. He was born and raised in Nigeria. Right. Uh, I don't know if he's a hundred percent. And I'm, you know, right. who is it? Who's a hundred percent? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, true. who's I mean, the fact that Shannon Sharp is 90% is crazy. And now I mean the fact that I'm 85%, which is kind of crazy yeah. to me too, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, who knows? There are probably some Nigerians who are like, whoa, 85%, 90%. You guys are crazy. I'm only 70% Nigerian. I'm, <laughs> I'm he, also Sierra Leone and you know, Guyana. And, has he seen you know, your Niger. so he's seen your Nigerian joke? Well, that's how we connected. Yeah, right? it's funny. That's so I funny. did. Uh, I was opening that's for Dave funny. Chappelle. I was opening for Dave Chappelle. This is at the Wells Fargo Center for the Arts. This was uh, fall 2025. I mean, 2015. 2025. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is fall 2015. Uh, the first half of the season before the, you know, before Christmas, right? Wells Fargo Center for the Arts in Santa Rosa. I opened for Dave. And at that game, because I posted a picture of it, Harrison Barnes was there. Uh, Festus was there um who else i think leandro barbosa like basically a lot of the warriors were there um and so we took this picture and we were talking afterwards and he and i connected on on the um the nigerian joke right because he loved that joke and then we started talking about where he went to college he went to vanderbilt and one of my best friends growing up went to vanderbilt and i was like yo i'm from alabama i'm right down there because that's in tennessee i'm like yo, i'm from alabama he's like oh okay yeah so you know the area i was like yeah man so we just kind of connected and then we we, we became you know, um, we followed each other on Instagram. And so we've kind of, over the years, we've had these these interactions. Um, and I wear my gray finals hat from that year with the little Cavs logo on it. <laughs> Maybe not starting off. Maybe you bring it out. <laughs> bring it, bring it out. Okay, yeah. that's a good idea. All right, man, yeah. wrap us so, up, Reg. I got all right. to edit. Okay. All right, folks. Um, get, get us these guests, dude. Let's talk. Yeah, no, we've been talking about it. We got to get somebody. Um, all right, so, hey, folks. Welcome to the end of another oh, that episode. Time of... comes good. <laughs> and every time I start my 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 my, my outro, Sal interrupts me. All right, uh, all right, folks. Welcome to another end uh, to the end of another episode of Spitballing. Uh, Sal and I love doing this, and we hope that you enjoy doing it. If you do, please subscribe, follow, and share. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll see you next week. That's Sal Kalani on Reggie Steele. Yep, yep. And this is spitballing. Peace.